Hey ladies, you ever thought about woodworking? Have you ever tried to do one of these furniture flips where you pull a dresser apart and repaint it and remodel it and sell it for a million dollars? Some people think that women doing woodworking is right up there with flooding your farm with a summer storm. I don't know. What do you think? Women, woodworking, power tools, should they go together? Yes? No? Let's go make a charcuterie board together. Prove them wrong. Come on, ladies. I started with this scrap piece of wood that I was able to get for free. There's a guy on my school bus route that has a sawmill and he had a few scrap pieces in a recycle bin. So I asked him and he said, yep, go ahead and take it. So I got it for free. So I tried to use the triangular shape of the scrap wood and find a way to use that to my advantage to make a shape of the charcuterie board. And I'm not 100% in love with the shape I came up with, but 80%, it's pretty cool. I was able to rescue a Tim Hortons coffee cup from the garbage. The highly engineered red tones, circular design. Okay, it's a coffee cup. It was garbage, but you know what? It makes a great template to make a rounded corner for a charcuterie board. And as it turns out, it is dual purpose. Not only does the base of the cup provide a nice circular template, so does the lid. Remarkable. Once I had the shape drawn on the board, I marked off what was gonna get cut and grabbed my jigsaw and started cutting. Okay, didn't start cutting. I went to the other side and started cutting. There's a lot of woodworkers that really don't like a jigsaw, but I think it's a very underrated tool. It's really versatile. There's a lot you can do with it. And it's not so powerful that you need to be really intimidated by it. I think a skill saw, like a circular saw, is far more intimidating. Band saw, table saw, more intimidating, very scary. A jigsaw is nicely powered. You can still take your finger off if you're not careful, but it's, I don't know, I think it's just the right amount of power to it to make it really friendly to the beginner woodworker and women in particular who are just beginning their journey in woodworking. I highly recommend it.
blade of a jigsaw moves up and down very much like the needle on a sewing machine. The steering, if you could call it that, comes from the back end. You don't steer it from the front. Pivot the back end of it, you can turn some pretty tight corners and make a nice curve in your project. And I think maybe that's why some woodworkers don't like this. If you don't understand that the steering comes from the back end and you're trying to steer it from the front and, and direct it to where you want to cut and you're using the front and trying to turn it and angle it, yeah, you're gonna be super frustrated with it. But if, if you always think about it as a car that has steering in the back wheels, I don't know, does that make it harder or less confusing? Now, what can be tricky is leaving room on your project to keep the clamp in one spot and you still have room for the length of the saw. As you see, I'm banging the back end of my saw against the clamp and I wasn't gonna be able to maneuver it the way I wanted to. So I just moved the clamps, moved the, the project piece and uh, repositioned it and away we went. I won't bore you with an hour of sanding on video. Okay, I didn't really spend an hour on sanding. I don't mind sanding. I usually have my earphones on and I've got an audio book or a podcast going. So I get lost in that and I don't even pay attention to my sanding. But uh, to me, sanding is actually relaxing. I know I'm weird, but... Uh, I've sped up the sanding so that you get a bit of an idea of the sanding. I went from 60 grit, I think, 120 grit, and then 220 grit. The higher the number, the finer the grit and the smoother it's gonna be. And then I realized what I had done. I made the silly thing way too big. Okay, the handle anyways. I don't know whose hand I thought was gonna be holding this, but it sure wasn't mine. I have a midget size hand and this was way too big. So I redesigned it, made the handle thinner so that I could grab it, drew it out, cut it out, sanded it, and it still wasn't quite what I wanted. So I drew it out again and cut it out again and sanded it out again. It was my own design. It's not that I had a pattern to go from. And it's one of the prices you pay for designing something yourself. But on the other hand, hey, I designed this myself and I made it work and it's kind of cool.
because the blade is moving up and down so quickly, it vibrates a lot and you need to clamp your workpiece onto a, a table to keep it in one place. Otherwise, you have to use your hand and that's not always safe to do. So clamp your workpiece onto a table and you've got two hands free to guide the saw. One mistake that's really super easy to make, and I do this a lot, is not keep the saw perpendicular to the table. In other words, I kind of sometimes angle it and then the blade's not moving exactly up and down, it's moving on an angle. So there's one spot where the blade cut the curve at a bit of an angle and then when it came back the other way, it didn't meet up at the same angle. So I have some extra sanding to do. It's, it's a thing, it's a mistake that a lot of people make with the jigsaw, but it's also part of the versatility of the jigsaw because you can make an angle cut on purpose by changing the angle of the base. But that's for another video some other time. So I have to sand it. This is some pretty soft wood. I just took a piece of scrap wood and some sandpaper and started sanding by hand. Sanded the rest of it with the power sander and in no time it was smooth as glass. And then everybody's favorite part, putting on the finish. Once it was sanded and I wiped the dust off, I just used food grade mineral oil into the board, put a lot on, let it soak in and put a couple of coats on and really let it soak in so that it'll keep it from cracking and drying out. Well, I was just about to put the wax on and my phone ran out of storage. So I had to dump a bunch of video clips onto my computer. One of those things. Anyways, I thought I'd just add this. This is my assistant. Who's going to look hi. <laughs> um, I thought I would just say that I was noticing that my first video clip was at 6.52 tonight. It is now 9.40. Um, I know I started this project just after supper and uh, it hasn't taken me that long. And I, distractions. Um, I guess what I'm saying is this is totally doable as a weekend project. And even if it's not something you want to sell, it could be something that you keep for yourself and say, eh, hello, I made this. If this is your first project, uh, I'm going to show you in a second the tools that I use. Like I use two power tools, two clamps, and a Tim Hortons cup. Like, it's not that much. You can do this. And I just wanted to show you that even if you've never done something crazy like this before, you've got this and you can do it. Okay, so there you have it. My charcuterie, charcuterie board, the cheese board, <laughs> is finished. And here's the table, sorry about the lighting. Let me see if I can get a better shot. Here's the table with all the things that I used. 
I mean, nothing fancy. A jigsaw and a sander. It's a random orbital sander. The bottom randomly orbitizes. Um, I had hearing protection and a face mask for the sanding. Uh, I have, what is it called? Work tunes. I super recommend them. No, this is not a paid sponsorship, but it would be awesome if they would sponsor me. Um, I love these things. They're Bluetooth. They connect to your phone. You can listen to audiobooks or music or podcasts or whatever. And the battery lasts forever on a charge. Um, and like there, you can, you can use them when your kids are screaming too. I, I've heard about that. I, I would never have done that. Okay. Um, the Tim Hortons cup is somewhat optional. Um, I actually am not a fan of Tim Hortons. The cat is also optional, but I highly recommend it. Um, I, I'd prefer something better than Tim's, but it also it's important to be dark roast, double, double, well stirred. Um, a pencil, a ruler, and this is, what's it called? A combination, combination square, I think. I forget what it's called. These are super handy to have. Um, the, there's so much versatility to them. And I might do a video just on this alone. But uh, anyways, more than anything, just a, a ruler or a straight edge. And um, a pencil. And a cat. Um, two clamps. That's all. Nothing fancy again. Um, I went through four sanding pads um 60 60 grit 120 grit and 220 grit and my super handy dandy uh scrap piece of wood to do the inside of the, the curve there um and, and that's that's it oh and baby oil preferably without the fragrance this is just mineral oil there's nothing in this that's not edible, believe it or not, um, which is good to know if you're using it for your baby because, you know. And this is a brand of beeswax, but um, that's what we have. But any kind of beeswax, of course, would work because it's um, food grade. And now I'm going to have to wipe this down. Um, after a uh, cat's paws have been on it, but anyway, you're a rascal. Thank you for joining me tonight, and tonight, I guess, after supper. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you realize that doesn't, woodworking doesn't have to be intimidating, and um, don't let other people intimidate you about this. Um, you can do this. You got this. And the sense of accomplishment, once you've got something that you've done and you can serve somebody uh, cheese and crackers or something on this, and you can go, I made this, hello, I made this by myself. That, uh, that about wraps it up. And uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll talk to you next time.